Interstellar travel is a long-standing quest for humanity. Since we have landed on Moon, many of us started believing that interstellar spaceship is possible, which can take humanity to explore distant worlds, and expand our horizon. Several missions have been proposed over the years, to build a spaceship which can travel at 10% speed of light, and go where we have never been in a single lifetime. Today, we are going to discuss all those proposed interstellar spaceship, and find out which one can take us to stars in our lifetime. Some exotic and mind-blowing ideas, have been proposed by scientists over the years, which sounds like science fiction, but today, they are not unrealistic. Like the Starship powered with EM drive, the antimatter drive, wormhole, light sail, the famous Alcabier warp drive and, black hole drive. And, there is an existing tech, that can make interstellar travel possible at light speed, and we will discuss this later in video. First, let's take a look at, how fast we need to travel to make interstellar travel possible in our lifetime. The nearest star to Earth is a triple star system called, Alpha Centauri, which is approximately 4.35 light years away from Earth. The distances between the stars, is usually expressed in light years which in a simple term, is distance traveled at speed of light in one year. One light year is equivalent to nearly, 6 million million miles. Voyager 1 is the fastest outward bound spacecraft, traveling from past 44 years in space, and is the only man-made object to enter interstellar space. Voyager 1 is traveling at speed of nearly 38,000 miles per hour, and has covered only 0.2% of light year in 44 years, and it will take Voyager 1 nearly, 40,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri. We need a spaceship, which can travel at minimum 10% speed of light, to reach Alpha Centauri in our lifetime. Astronomers have identified nearly 4,000 planetary candidates, out of which 1,100 are confirmed, that can sustain life. Let's say, life of humanity is in danger on Earth, due to some deadly asteroid approaching, or high intense solar flare, which could wipe out our atmosphere. And, we only have few years to leave Earth, and head for other star system by year 2100, to a habitable planet to save human species. Scientists think that Proxima b, in Alpha Centauri star system is our best chance, where an Earth-like size planet, is waiting for us at an habitable distance from star. The distance from Earth, is approximately 4.4 light years. Now, our first option is, the conventional rocket, where the propellant is the big limiter in space travel. The conservation of momentum, makes it difficult to build a big and fast enough starship. We need to move at minimum 10% speed of light, to reach Proxima b in our lifetime. And using rocket equation to calculate the fuel required, we need fuel tank larger than the observable universe, to reach our destination. With the efficiency of traditional fuel, it's impossible to make spaceship for interstellar travel. We need a fuel, which has maximum energy density, meaning it has less mass but has higher energy output. Einstein's E equals mc square shows, for higher speed we need maximum energy with minimum mass, just like our sun. The thermonuclear propulsion spacecraft, uses this methodology. In 1950s and 60s, Project Orion was proposed, which was led by physicists Ted Taylor and Freeman Dyson. The idea was to propel, a 4,000-ton spaceship using series of nuclear bomb explosions behind the craft. In total, 300,001 megaton bombs were required, to propel the spacecraft at 10% speed of light, over the period of one month. Which is equivalent roughly, 6,000 of the Tsar bomb by Soviet, the most powerful nuclear bomb ever made, or roughly, 14 million of Fat Man bomb, dropped by USA on Nagasaki. If we achieve this we can reach Proxima B in 44 years, but we also need to slow down at the other end, so we need to save half of the fuel, which increases our travel time to 89 years. The Project Orion was eventually abandoned, majorly due to the Peace Treaty of 1963, banning nuclear explosion in space. And now, it would cost us more than, 9 trillion dollar to complete this project. There is another similar project, proposed by British Interplanetary Society. Project Daedalus Developed in 1970, Project Daedalus is a concept design of thermonuclear spacecraft, which uses nuclear fusion instead of nuclear fission. Scientists currently have made some progress in achieving nuclear fusion. This video on China's artificial sun shows, how close are we in achieving nuclear fusion. Daedalus, is a 54,000 ton spacecraft, and it is so huge that it would have to be built in orbit. Using helium-3 as fuel for nuclear fusion, the spacecraft can achieve up to 12% light speed over a period of 4 year, and it would take over 41 years to reach Proxima b, which is not substantial improvement over nuclear fission. 
we would need tens of thousands tons of helium-3, which can be mined from Moon. The cost of this project is expected to be more than $12.5 trillion currently. But, what if we can achieve 10% light speed, with only 1% of fuel mass as compared to thermonuclear fuel? This is the very idea behind antimatter drive. When antimatter comes in contact with matter, the mass of both is converted into energy in an extremely violent explosion, which makes nuclear explosion look like a small firecracker. Antimatter is produced in experiments conducted in particle accelerator at CERN, but the harvesting and storing of antimatter is extremely difficult. The process is very slow, and immensely expensive. Even if we use accelerators only for making antimatter, it would take one year to produce one billionth of a gram. And to reach Proxima B, we need tens of kilos of antimatter. If we can produce this quantity of antimatter, then we can use pion drives to accelerate up to 50% speed of light, which could take us to Proxima B in under 10 years. Anti-proton annihilation reactions, produce charged and uncharged pions in addition to neutrinos and gamma rays. The charged pions can be channeled by a magnetic nozzle to produce thrust. This type of antimatter rocket is called, pion rocket. The limit of pion drive spacecraft is limited, only to how much antimatter we could make. It's possible to go up to 80% speed of light with antimatter drive, and at that speed, time dilation starts taking effect. At 80% speed of light, the time of five and a half years would be less than three and a half years for the onboard astronauts. The antimatter drive is a far distant reality, but, we also have ion drives in our arsenal. Several space missions have already used ion drives, for exploration of our solar system. But can ion, or EM drive interstellar spaceship possible? With ion thrusters, we don't need to carry tons of fuel, and worry running out of it at some point. Ion drive uses electromagnetic field to create thrust, by accelerating ions using electricity. The thrusters creates ion, by generating plasma inside the spacecraft. Neutral gas like xenon, is bombarded with electrons, which in turn creates more electron turning them into positively charged ions. All the electrons are then contained in chamber leading to more ionization, and the positively charged ions are siphoned out, which are then accelerated by high voltage. This process creates thrust, and accelerates spacecraft at speeds of up to 90 km per second. The electricity requirements can be met with solar panels, making it 90% efficient drive. But the current technology of ion drives produces, very less thrust per unit of weight. If we make a spacecraft for interstellar travel with ion drive, the energy requirement for such ion drives cannot be met with solar panel alone. We need to generate power using space nuclear reactors. Considering the electricity a typical nuclear power plant generates, it would take around 10 years for an unmanned spacecraft to reach 3% light speed. One way trip to Proxima B can take up to 140 years with ion drive. Improvements in the design of ion thrusters could reduce the travel time, but not to that of an average human lifespan. But, there is another technology available that we might use. Light sails. A 13 feet wide light sail coated with sapphire, can use pressure of light from ground-based lasers, to propel a chip-sized probe a few grams to 20% speed of light, which can take it to Alpha Centauri in about 20 years. This breakthrough project was envisioned by famous physicist Stephen Hawking. If we build on this idea, and create a spacecraft attached with kilometers wide sail, we need the most powerful lasers that can work from Moon, powered with helium-3 based nuclear reactor, which is equivalent to 100 traditional nuclear power plant. That setup, may be able to propel the spacecraft to 20% light speed, until sails are far enough to be powered by lasers. We could reach Proxima B in around 20 years, but without the capability to slow down, the spacecraft will be doing a 72 hours flyby to our destination. So, light sails is the best bet only for unmanned crafts, designed to study the distant stars. Now let's get to interesting tech of all. The al warp drive. If this warp drive is made possible, we could travel faster than speed of light. But is it really possible? We all are familiar with the Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, which proved it's not possible to move faster than speed of light in space. But the equation can be tricked to achieve speed faster than light, without breaking laws of physics. Miguel Alcabier in 1994 made such observation, and proposed a drive which can use intense gravitational forces to move faster than speed of light. To understand this concept, let's turn to black hole. The intense gravity of black hole curves three-dimensional fabric of space around it. This extreme bending of space creates a time dilation, 
the closer we move to black hole the slower the time feels. Just like in movie Interstellar, few hours for a person in black hole gravity, is many years for a person on Earth. If the person near the black hole, took one hour to travel a distance of 10 kilometers, for the person on Earth, it would have taken several years. The Alcabier warp drive applies the same principle, our space is filled with exotic matter or dark matter, which makes the vacuum of space. If a spacecraft is able to decrease the energy density lower than vacuum at one side, and simultaneously increase the density at other end, the spacecraft would wrap itself in a bubble. The inside of the bubble will be inertial reference frame, and inhabitants experience no proper acceleration. But, the bubble itself will move faster than speed of light, without breaking the laws of physics. But this requires tremendous amount of energy, which cannot be generated by any man-made machine. And, we know nothing about the dark matter. So the warp drive is currently not possible. Another proposal for using exotic physics to drive a spacecraft is the Schwarzschild Kugel Blitz drive, which would use a microscopic artificial black hole contained within its engines as its power source. This artificial black hole can be created by focusing sufficient energy density of laser light over a small area. This could bend the space time and create a singularity, an artificial black hole made from light. The right size black hole can radiate the Hawking radiation in tremendous amount which can be used to propel the spacecraft. To propel a starship big enough, we need black hole weighing 606,000 metric tons, which is like compressing a fully loaded Burj Khalifa building to the size of an atom. Such black hole would radiate 160 petawatts of energy, this much energy can fulfill entire Earth's power consumption for more than 6 years. This black hole will have a lifespan of 3 and half years, with such a power output, the black hole could accelerate to 10% the speed of light in 20 days. The only problem is, we will require the lasers powerful than the black holes they create, which may be possible in future, but currently we are no way near this tech. So, we have discussed a lot of ways to get to stars. And, thermonuclear drive is the only one that can be built in time and take humans to Proxima B by 2100s. But remember in start we mentioned an existing tech, which can enable us to travel at speed of light. Well, until now we have been finding solution to move at faster speeds, so that we can attain interstellar travel within our lifetime. What if, we go other way and increase our lifetime? And we are not talking about immortality, though it would be great to have longer life. But almost all Silicon Valley and digital company, are one way or another working on making human consciousness digital. Elon Musk's Neural Link is one such example. And many other companies are closer than you can imagine. If we are able to map our consciousness on a digital drive, and since data can travel at speed of light, we would be able to send out digital self to any location at light speed. Also, we have learned that we can send unmanned spacecraft within 20 years. Currently, we have landed robots on Moon, Mars and other planets. Now with current technology, it's not very difficult to make an hardware, capable of storing digital copy of our brain and operate it. Let's say, we sent an spacecraft filled with such robots on a journey to Proxima B. In 20 years, they can land on a planet even if it's not habitable. Then, we can send the digital copy of human brain moving at nearly speed of light, which reaches that robot in four and a half years. With the current tech, we can make this possible, and explore the other star systems in this century. And humans can travel to Alpha Centauri, several times in a single lifetime. Moreover, how amazing it would be that after taking morning coffee, you can get to a station where you can upload your digital self and go to moon in three minutes, in 12 minutes you are at Mars and, after exploring Moon and Mars, you can get to dinner at home with your family. This may sound like science fiction, but it's a possibility that can become reality in near future. If you like this video drop a like, and share your views on interstellar travel. There are a few other theories on deep space travel, like quantum entanglement, which we will discuss in our next video. And if any other topic interests you related to space and technology, share with us in comments.